This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. This episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Fafalius and I'm the producer of Chris to Makes a Podcast and the host of the One Hit Thunder Podcast. And I'm Matt Kelly, host of Horror Movie Night and the producer slash the head of content for the Geekscape Podcasting Network. Between the two of us, we have, believe it or not, 25 years of podcasting experience and we want to help you start your own podcast. We know podcasting and we want to share that knowledge with you. So whether you're new to podcasting or you want some feedback on your currently active podcast, we want to help. Or perhaps you're just overwhelmed with all of the editing work. Well, we can help you with that also. You can check out our website at weknowpodcasting.com for more information. We're excited to help your podcasting dreams become a reality. Hey, Dylan. Hey, Matt. So I proposed a weird question to you. Okay. I've been thinking about this as I, every December, you know, we watch our regular things that have been in rotation for like 20 or 30 years. And as I was watching Frosty the Snowman, I had this thought process, which is like, we've tried to do feature length movies on so many of these cartoons. I mean, the most obvious one is Grinch. We've done a ton of different yeah. versions of the Grinch as a feature length film, but we've never tried to do it for Frosty the Snowman. And I feel like there's enough meat on that bone to like make it a feature length. So you feel film. like there's been like a missed opportunity. I think that there's so a missed far. opportunity there. I'm lo- I would love to have this discussion, but I'm also the person who I absolutely hate the Frosty the Snowman <laughs> TV <laughs> special. Yeah, really, I'm not, a, not a big fan. I don't like the the way it is animated because this was Rankin Bass. Yeah, Happy Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it was Rankin Bass, but I love the stop motion Rankin Bass. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who Santa Claus, it? Yeah. Rudolph, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. All of those. So, like, it's almost, I guess I was of that mindset, even though this came out in 1969. When you were a kid, was there ever, like, where we were, animation went from, like, 2D old school Disney animation to more, like, CGI, like, 3D, like, Beast Wars stuff. Almost, for some reason, is what's popping out into my head. I mean, I did love Beast Wars. Yeah, I loved Beast Wars, too, but it was almost like... I loved those stop-motion animations so much, and then I'm like, oh, this is just 2D animation? It's just fucking... This sucks. See, I always always (laughs) like 2D animation. I'm... Yeah. And, like, as I've gotten older, I've learned to love 2D animation even more. Well, that's the thing. Like, now I, I love 2D animation. Still not a huge fan of Frosty the Snowman. I'm not even a huge fan of the song. There's no like no, I, dislike, but I think meh. so. Frosty the Snowman. Here's like the the thing that disconnects me from a lot of the other Rankin Bass movies. Yeah, is uh, I think I've talked about this before, but if not, um, there's a VHS tape that I have that my aunt 
taped all of these Christmas specials onto one VHS tape for yeah. me. And I watched that tape constantly. Okay. And it was like Garfield Christmas special, The Muppets Family Christmas, Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special. Yeah. But then it also had How the Grinch Stole Christmas and Frosty the Snowman. Okay. So like when I think of Christmas, those are like the five big specials yeah. that are like etched into my brain. I enjoy the stop motion yeah. specials, but like probably the one I like the most is Rudolph. But I also hate watch Rudolph because really? so many people, like so many of the characters are just so shitty. Oh, the worst. And, and honestly, <laughs> like, that Rudolph is my favorite stop motion Rankin Bass is Year Without a Santa Claus. Love Year Without a Santa Claus. Maybe it's Santa Claus is coming to town. What's the one where he's like the, the skinny redhead kid? That's, that's Santa Claus is coming yeah, to town. I enjoy that one. Yeah. That one's fun. But I think what it is with Frosty the Snowman is like, we've seen all of these. We've seen two different interpretations of the Grinch. And I think that in both of those films, they tried to like dig a little bit deeper into the Grinch and some of these characters. And that's totally fine. Yeah. But I think that like with Frosty... You're introducing this really crazy concept that this hat brings things to life. Okay. Yeah. Right? I just feel like it's a brisk 20 minute short. Like, it is. Like, and in, in my opinion, yeah. like, that's the perfect length. <laughs> but I think. Like, <laughs> but we got into that, the, the time discussion. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I think that, like, because a lot of the stop motion ones are longer. Yeah. Like, Rudolph is like a 45 minute yeah. special. Frosty is like a quick 20 minutes. And I think that there's something charming about Frosty. I just like Frosty. I don't know what it is. I agree with you. I don't like the song at all. Yeah. The song's whatever. But I just like, I enjoy watching Frosty. But it moves so quick. Like, it's like you introduce kids. Frosty is like alive and dancing two minutes into this movie. Yeah. And then it's like, well, we're just going to get him to the, we're going to get him to the North Pole. And like they get to the North Pole like, 10 minutes into the special. Yeah. Frosty's melted 15 minutes into the special and he's back again 17 minutes into this. But like, it's like, man, you could really like tell this story and like stretch it out and you could add a whole lot more. Maybe not make the magician the villain and yeah. and like dive more. It, like you could still have the magician being like, yo, I've got a magic hat. I don't going to fucking capitalize yeah. on it. I don't care about your fucking walking Frosty man. I've got a magic hat. But like also like maybe dive into like people being like, there's a living human snowman. Yeah. And like get like Frankenstein-y about it. Ooh, like, I like that. Like crazy village people. Like he has to run away to Santa because no one else will accept a human snowman in their town. Yeah. And I mean, because I mean, this is of an era where I feel like everything needed a villain. Everything needed a villain. Like you don't need that. In no. a Frosty special. No. At all. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing like Frosty the Snowman, nothing about that special is memorable. To See, me. I for me, it's like it's actually one of the ones that I won't say it makes me cry. It definitely doesn't make me cry, but at a time it did. Yeah. Because I think that it is really I think it's a sweeter story than Rudolph. Okay. Because I feel like Rudolph is a story of a kid who gets bullied. <laughs> Yeah. relentlessly also by his father by his father <laughs> and everybody and is only accepted when they find value in him yeah. but they still don't appreciate like it's not like hey we're sorry that we were shit heels to you it's just like yeah. hey now you can help us so i guess you're okay yeah it's like kind of whatever like i don't i don't know I, i've always kind of like i do want to go on the record of saying that not once have i said i fucking love rudolph <laughs> yeah no, no no i'm just saying like i like using rudolph as like a comparison yeah. to the rank and best thing but like in in frosty there's that cool relationship between frosty and that little girl and like yeah. he basically sacrifices his life because she is like getting hyperthermia essentially yeah. he's like all right i've got to get her somewhere warm and he takes her into the greenhouse and allows himself to melt to protect her and i think that yeah. that's like a really like that's what i want in a hero yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's like and then it's like yeah of course santa's gonna be like someone with that much love and compassion deserves to be a snowman forever like he should be allowed to live like like i i think that you could dive into those themes deeper now i'm not saying we don't need a two-hour movie we certainly don't need even like an hour and 45 minute long movie i don't even think we need a 90 minute movie but give me like a Do good a grinch 2019 a good grinch 2019 give me a good like 
75 to 80 minute long animated movie where you really expand on that stuff. Or if you want to do live action with like the animated snowman, yeah, maybe. But I don't, I don't know. I feel like that is something that has never looked good since go. like, since Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like Who Framed Roger yeah. Rabbit was like the last time we got really good at mixing live action characters with any type of CGI or well, animated Here's what thing. we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Illumination. We'll take it on. No, please not Illumination. Okay. Let's, let's, let's um, get we'll Pixar get a, on the case. We'll get a close up of Frosty's butt as he's getting as he's ready. Getting in the ready morning. to go out. Um, who would do he's the, about to thump a thump thump. Who would do the, the soundtrack? Uh, JPEG Mafia or uh, or Run the Jewels. We'll get them on the soundtrack Yo. for, for Yo. Frosty the Snowman. I know you say you're not a fan of Frosty the Snowman, but if Run the Jewels <laughs> is doing Frosty the Snowman, I think you're a fucking fan. Well, uh, that was one thing we didn't touch on in our Grinch episode was that not only did Tyler, the creator, do the soundtrack, he also put out a Grinch EP of songs that were inspired from the movie. Really? Yeah, and it's not great. It's probably, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Ron the Jewel's doing uh, Frosty the Snowman. That's some fire right there. Yeah. But keep it away from Frosty. It'll make them keep, out. Keep it away from Frosty. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm here all week. Yeah. I, I do think that there's there's a potential there. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Is is like I can't believe that it hasn't been examined and discussed. Yeah, I mean we I got three movies out of Tim Allen playing a Santa Claus. We got two movies out of that. Um, we don't talk about escape clause in this house. <laughs> No, now honestly, the only time I've been disappointed by a Martin Short performance. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, let's let's use that as a little bit of a segue because Steve Martin plays uh, Jack uh, Frost in uh, Escape. Martin Clause. Short, not Steve, Steve Ma- Martin. Dude, Steve Martin in Escape Clause would have probably changed that movie. That would have changed a lot of that movie. Yeah, that movie's bad. But yeah, Martin Short plays. Jack Frost. Jack Frost. Jack Frost. There's been a couple different living snowman movies. Yeah, and honestly, I can say there's not one living snowman movie where I'm like, "Yay!" Like this is awesome. I agree with that. I can ironically enjoy the two horror ones. Yeah, but I, my mom, fucking loves the Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton movie, one? and I, from the first time I watched it, was like, "This is." bad yeah <laughs> like that was another movie we were talking about the grinch 2000 where i saw it in theaters and was like eh, that wasn't good no. as a kid a prime age of who cares what i'm watching i'm at the movies yeah. like this is an exciting time <laughs> exactly like no it was not good and it was one of those things i i hate to continue to blame freeform well they love the shit out of that they well, did freeform, i mean We'll get into this topic, I'm sure, a million and a half times, but I have a big belief that the reason why you are not a huge fan of Hocus Pocus has a lot less to do with the quality of the movie of and a Pocus. whole lot more with the fact that it makes up about 20 of the 31 days of Halloween on Freeform. Yeah, and that's that's the thing, is it it became... I hate, I hate being as negative as this is going to sound. It became a personality trait. Well... Like, oh, I'm... I'm super into spooky stuff. I'm like, no, you just really like Hocus Pocus. You like Hocus. <laughs> but I, I think the same could be said. Like, I'm sure we will do an episode one of these days on Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a movie that I absolutely love, but would also say has become such a personality trait yep. for people. Yep. Uh, so much so that I think most of them forget that the third act really isn't that good. <laughs> Like, yeah, honestly, like the not. third act, like that movie loses its footing by the third act. Like yeah. the songs kind of disappear, or they become less memorable, and it's just like, all right, is this over? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Pretty um, much after like the town hall meeting or whatever, kidnap the Santa Claus, whatever song it is. Uh, it's the Oogie Boogie Man song. That's where it stops for me. Honestly, even on the soundtrack, like yeah. I mean, you listen, you listen to up the Oogie Boogie song, and you're like, all right, yeah, I don't cool. need Sally's song here. or Poor Jack right now. No. Like I'm good. I will say again, we're going to talk about this in a future episode, but I will say um, when they did Nightmare Revisited, where all the bands covered songs from the soundtrack. Hold on. The shiny toy guns cover of the finale okay, is yeah. absolutely amazing. I was gonna say that is a very uneven cover album. Having yes. re-listened to it, yes, it is. It's and got some even stellar as covers who, and who then some. Absolutely loves corn. Oh, I'm I actually really like their version of Kidnap, of Kidnap Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah. It's just um, it stands out. My problem with that soundtrack is 
that it is the worst cover of What's This I've ever heard in my entire life by Flyleaf. Was that, yeah, was that Flyleaf? Yeah. yeah. I've heard so many, like, Fall Out Boy does a great yeah. version. There's a lot of great versions of What's She's, This. What's this? What's this? Yeah, it's, she just. It's really. There's bad. no sound of magic and joy no. anywhere in that cover. Versus, like, I, I think that All American Rejects version of Jack Lament might be one of the best All American yeah, Rejects songs. Fav- yeah, that's my <laughs> like, favorite version of that song. But, okay, so back so back to Frosty <laughs> and Jack Frost. I think we're proving that Frosty could not sustain itself. <laughs> I don't think that, I don't think we're proving anything. All we're proving is that Michael Keaton can't play Fr- Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, it's, and that makes me so sad because, especially during this Michael Keaton renaissance, that, he had a rough period, man. Yeah. He had a rough patch. Right now, though, if they were like, we're doing a Frosty the Snowman movie and Michael Keaton's playing Frosty, right now, I might be like, all right, give me Michael Keaton as Frosty. But give me, like, Vulture Michael Keaton yeah. or Birdman Michael Keaton. Please do not give me Jack Frost Michael Keaton. Yeah, Frosty has to be written by just us. Yes. <laughs> we can't let anyone else come um, in and give us notes. Okay, so it'll be just us. So we're writing it. Who do you cast as Frosty? Well, I mean... Barring Michael Keaton. Barring Michael Keaton. Okay, so this just jumped into my head. Okay. And you gotta you gotta follow me here. I gotta make a quick... <laughs> DJ Miller. <laughs> no. Um, Is he still canceled? I don't even remember what I happened. I can't remember. I, I, He's I, either canceled or in jail. I can't. It, or both. <laughs> Dude made a fake bomb threat on a on a train. That's pretty hard to come back. Is that what back. happened? That was one of his many mistakes, but that's a hard God, one to I come back remember. from. Now, what bums me out is I love Cloverfield and I love HUD. Yeah. Like, I love that character he I, played in that. I like every movie that I've seen T.J. Miller in. I yeah. can like T.J. Miller, the actor, and not like T.J. Miller, the person. Yeah, for that's sure. That's kind of where I fall. So my first thought was Jack Black. But, but then I thought, man, Jack Black has already really done a lot i want to open it up to jack black light a person i've been a fan of for years i want to get dan fogler as I frosty like that. i like that because i do love dan fogler i was in uh i did putnam county spelling bee and he is yeah, the, he's, the he's originator barf. of barfay 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 now i do have a backup person as well like let's say because dan fogler he's got money he's doing all right yeah. for himself god i want a fanboys too so bad but if he's unavailable, yeah. then my backup, mm-hmm. Tyler Labine. Name's not ringing a bell. You don't know Tyler Labine? And not off the top of my head. Do you ever Give see me- uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil? Okay. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Hug it. Chuck it. Football. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. I think Tyler, because you need someone who's who's like, uh, we don't fat shame on this podcast. I was going to say, you're making a thick. No, no but I was saying, Frosty. Dude, Frosty needs to be pleasantly plump. And I think that both of those are some pleasantly plump actors. So you are, you are putting that you are making a live action Frosty, not an. I don't even like think that CGI it needs. Animated. No, no, no. Even if it's CGI, they've got the joyful voice. Yeah. You need that voice because you've got it. Like my entire audition for that, bringing them in, is I'm like, I need to hear your best happy birthday. Yeah. You know, like that's what you're going to sell the whole movie on that. Happy birthday. I want to go ironic with it. I want a smart ass Clark Duke as my. Okay. Okay. I could, I could get into some Clark Duke too. Yeah. Clark Duke. I've never seen someone come so close to the fame. Yep. And then just. Psh, yeah. Like, yeah. Just disappear. Oh Cause he was gosh. right there. He was on the cusp. He was. People loved him after Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, They're oh like, who is so this guy? Good. So good. But um, I think he doesn't want it. He was like, Nah, I'm good. I'm. Nah, good. yeah. He's like doing his own thing, making like indie films with Adam Rifkin or something. Yeah, I, I mean that's like Jay Bershaw. I feel like Jay Bershaw is like he could be as big as all of the other freaks and geeks and undeclared they got people. Real douchey, like but, recently. <laughs> yeah, but he was just like, Nah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Bumble. Who says Valentine's Day is just for couples? Just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you can't get out there and live your best love life. That's where Bumble comes in. This February 14th, you can flip the script and give those relationshipers a friendly dose of FOMO. Say no to staying in this Valentine's Day and yes to more. More dates, more first kisses, more gossip for the group chat girlies. Do Valentine's your way. Date now on Bumble. (laughs) <laughs> like, i don't know he made some horror movie and then people didn't like it because it wasn't good i can't remember no can't random remember acts of violence yeah and it, it wasn't was, good it was I, I mean this is my like i can't say a negative thing so i'm just like it was fine yeah <laughs> like, it, was, it was like it was a thing yeah because i love the concept i think the yeah. concept's super cool. it's a great concept but, but it's um, also like not a new concept no <laughs> like, but 
I know he went off on like horror fans and horror in general. Oh, he was not like no. received very well. He went no. off on like Twitter. Jay, no. I know. Just keep your mouth shut, dude. Like dude, I could watch undeclared nonstop because you're just such a charming leading yeah, man. man. But, and uh, I love me some goon. Goon is great. Both of them. I don't remember how I felt about Goon 2, but I love Goon. Yeah, I love both of the movies Um, because he directed them yeah. as well. Don't love his character because he's an obnoxious douche, but that's what he was going for. That's what he was going for. But, um, he was but those I mean, movies, so good. She's Just Not Into You, Solid Flick, and other T.J. P- Miller. Yeah. Good. <laughs> feel like very <laughs> under, <laughs> underrated. T.J. Miller's coming back, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Until Deadpool 3. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, they, I think he's gone. He's gone. He's got to be, right? They, like, wrote him out of Deadpool 2 for the most part. Really? I'm trying to remember. I think his character is like either completely not in there or like just barely in there. Yeah, yeah I like gotta I, rewatch it. It's been I a think long they time. pulled like, this is gonna be a, a really weird reference, but I, I think they pulled kind of like a season 12 RuPaul's Drag Race with like Sherry Pie where like, I'm not sure if you know the story of that at all. I was gonna say, you're like, this is a really weird yeah, reference. Yeah, really weird even reference. Like, so all right. on RuPaul's Drag Race, <laughs> yeah. one of the cast members, Sherry Pie, Okay. Uh, so obviously with most reality shows, they tape everything up front yeah. and then they release it except for the finale. Like the finale comes after yeah. everything else is aired. So the first episode drops of RuPaul's Drag Race and all of a sudden this person is like, how dare you put Sherry Pie on this show? They are a known catfisher and like just like out oh, all fuck. this terrible shit that this drag queen has been doing for years. Yeah. And the, the drag queen was like, you got me. Like, oh, like they didn't even deny. They were just like, yep, I'm a yeah. bad person. Sorry. So now the producers of this show have to deal with the fact that they have a drag queen on the show who is a clearly the standout. Yeah. And B, they know has already made it to the final three of the show. Oh. So they Shit. basically had to re-edit the whole show to like only sparingly show Sherry. Like they like and it started every single episode started with like this features a known catfisher named Sherry yeah. Pot. Like they put like they just like put it out there in the front, like we've dr- done our best to try to edit down their scenes. And then every single time that they won. Yeah. Anything at the end of it was like Sherry Pie's winnings has been donated to like this children's <laughs> charity. Like, like they just. But it's like it sucks because you're like, yeah. fuck, we shot this thing and like now we have this person in it that's kind of a cancer to our entire yeah. show. So like you have to, and I think something similar like that happened to Deadpool too, where like they shot it and then it was like at the peak of like T.J. Miller just being yeah. everything that was awful because it was like. He did the bomb threat on the bus. He did the, like, Alice, who was on Silicon Valley, like, started going public with, like, how misogynistic he was to her on the set. Yeah. So it was, like, all this stuff happening. And it's, like, we have our biggest movie of the summer about to come out starring him. So it's, like... They had to they had to think fast on that, but like yeah, I I think I, I think T J Miller's just kind of he's kind of fizzled yeah. out. So T J Miller not in the frosty. But Tyler reboot. the Bean, I've never heard an unkind word yeah, about. There we go. Clark Duke, Clark good Duke, stuff. So good. you know, guys, call us. We're interested. Yep. But yeah, so you got that. But then you have to think about who do you cast as the little girl, okay. right? Because she's just as important. The main cast that you really need to think about is the little girl and the magician. Okay. Um, the snidely the- whiplash looking magician. Yeah. <laughs> let's start with the little girl. What age are you going with? Are you going to try to keep it? Let's say middle school. Was, yeah, I think they were school. elementary school in the mo- in the cartoon, but let's go. Okay. Middle school's kind of like a, a safe spot because you could do like sixth grade. So it's yeah. still like young enough for them to be like, you know, yay. Yeah. Like, I like, love that I, I asked what age as if I know any names of any, any child yeah. actors. I'm trying to think. Currently. But you know, it's like, it's funny because like there are like those child actors that you see in movies because some, so many of them you see like child actors and you're like, ugh. But like, yeah. we're getting like a good generation lately yeah. of like really good. Te- like, I haven't watched a movie with a child actor in it where I was like, ugh, in a really, really yeah. long time. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, these kids are pretty good. I'm trying to think who stood out recently. I'm like, we could, um, I'm running through all the Christmas movies that I watched this year. Throw Chloe Grace in a time machine. We could put her in Yeah, shrink her down. There's got to be one. I'm sure that there's like, 
uh, no, they're all too old. Like I'm like yeah, thinking of like exactly. the Stranger Things kids. I'm like, oh man, like that kid from Stranger no, Things. No, they're like great. missing the boat on season four at this yeah. point. Yeah. Oh mean. my god, it's ridiculous. Because the I was thinking the 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 skateboarder girl that comes in in the second season. Yeah. But like her when she was twelve. Which, yeah, when she was younger. <laughs> Um, that show should have ended with season three in my opinion i I i'm content if they uh, but they're not going to i thought that season four was supposed to be the last season i was like okay cool yeah like well let's wrap it up but now i'm hearing that there's going to be a couple more and i'm like we don't need more no like well i thought season three was a great ending you got like the until we're passing until until that little bumper until the bumper but like 11 moving on and stuff like that i I don't know yeah it was a good it was a it was a We'll see. My my brother has a quote where he says Netflix's motto is if it's a great show, keep making seasons until it isn't, yeah. which is sadly their MO lately. But uh I don't know, dude. They're they're starting to annoy me with the amount of like one season shows and then dude cutting it. Don't even get me started on Teenage Bounty Hunters. That was a fucking travesty this year. So there's that one. What was the other one? Has the girl from it. Like superpowers and the show legit ends on a on a cliffhanger and then yeah i I mean we talked about this on the tv podcast that i produced but like the fact that we're not getting a second season of teenage bounty hunters which was like such a fun show yeah and had like an awesome cliffhanger at the end but we're gonna get another season of space force which was like one of the worst things i've ever watched is like infuriating and while we're on this justice for everything sucks yeah (laughs) <laughs> Everything Sucks was really fun. The one thing I am excited about is that this show that my favorite show of 2020 that nobody watched is getting a second season. So I'm excited, which is Never Have I Ever. Have okay. You, did you watch that? No. It is so charming and fun. Okay. Like it is a beautifully charming show. I'll check it We're out. We're not going to come up with anything else. Um, now our ma- Snidely Whiplash Magician. The, the Magician. Unfortunately, the first thing popping into my head especially because he kind of looks like him as as robotnik in the new sonic movie. i was just about to say jim, jim carrey, carrey. Yep. i think jim carrey because we're on a jim carrey renaissance as well we're getting yes. jim carrey back into what he does best yeah and i think jim carrey doing exactly what he did yep. for sonic let's do it yeah book all right okay <laughs> jim carrey call Cast us Cast done us up. so all right plot so i think <laughs> <laughs> no so i think the plot you just expand on a little bit yeah. more you give a little bit more time in the school you maybe let the girl kind of get bullied a little bit maybe we can set this in high school maybe it can okay. be a, a high school girl who still believes in that christmas magic yeah and everyone makes fun of her because of it okay. and then just through this magic once in a lifetime thing she brings a snowman to life yeah through this magic hat and now everyone still thinks that she's weird because now she hangs out with a human yeah. snowman all the time. And it's about her trying to be able to get people to get on her level of she's us. You know, yeah. like we make her us. She's just all in on Christmas, but she lives in a town that could not that care doesn't. less. Yeah. All right. So we could like we could rope in the ideas of like the year without a Santa Claus yes. where people aren't believing anymore and yeah. stuff like that. Do we have the hat do other magical things? I was thinking about it? that. So I think the big thing is that if the hat comes off of the head of the snowman, the snowman stops being a, yeah. a snowman, which is understandable. What I would love is for there to be like at least this is like my horror mind now. Uh, yeah. That that hat has to fall on something else. Yeah. And bring it to life. Yeah. Now what? I don't know, but it has to happen at least once. Okay. It has to be very clear that this hat is the magic hat. You can't put any other hat on Frosty to bring him back. And it also has to be clear that the only thing that can make Frosty a living snowman besides that hat is the magic of Santa Claus at the end of the movie. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. So, well, now we need to cast a Santa. And Santa pops up at the very zero hour. You can okay. just grab any of your generic Santas. Bring in Russell, Kurt Russell, bring in... That's who, what I was about yeah. to say. I was going to say, like, if we're having it, like, Santa just come in, it's got to be a big cameo. And I yeah. think it should, ultimately, we start the Christmas verse. And that's when we bring in Kurt Russell and bring we're him. all in the same universe. Or you bring in Tim <laughs> Allen. <laughs> it, it should, it should, no matter what, it should be someone who's already played Santa yes. Claus in yeah. like a big capacity. Um, so it's got to be Tim Allen or Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. Those are the two I think that are, 
Uh, who played Santa in Elf? He was a very good Santa. I can't remember, but he was a great Santa. The guy from the original Miracle on 34th yeah. Street's not here anymore, right? No, so we can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Because he's my favorite Santa. We could pull the Disney Star Wars shtick and we'll cgi cgi his, just take footage from that 30s movie and yeah, yeah nep, that's what we're doing <laughs> i love I mean, it we're not actually going to get to make this so exactly. let's get crazy so yeah cri- the christmas universe like i think that that hat should like this is going to be so ghostbustersy but like that hat yeah. should like fall on a park bench and that park bench is just like <laughs> like it's just like running it around up. it's like the uh obscure reference it's like the piano in mario 64 yeah like mario gets close to it and it's like nah! yeah, like, it's just, <laughs> like just i would love this so here's the sequence the hat blows off the magician yeah right and it's floating in the air and it keeps landing on these things as they come to life for a second and then it blows off and we're just following it a tree comes to life like all this stuff and then it just lands on frosty's head and it fits perfectly i love it and then Happy birthday! There we go. All right. Cool. That's our trailer, too. Yeah. Our teaser is it's just, just the, that scene. Yeah, it's just that scene. And we don't even, we just have the hat floating. Yeah. It won't land on anything in the teaser. We save that for the movie. Yeah. But it's just floating and then it lands. And then all you see is like it pans down to Frosty's eyes. And the coal eye just bursts open into a human eye. And then it's like, Frosty, next winter. Coming <laughs> out on your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Someone like broke my brain the other day. We're like, do you think he says happy birthday all the time because it's Jesus's birthday? And I was like, <gasps> oh my God, I didn't even think about it like that. He just loves Jesus. He just He's loves so Jesus. Excited. He said, hi, ho, Jesus. Who's directing? Us. Us? We're directing? <laughs> no, um, I want, no, no. I don't want that. Um, we'll write it. I mean... Scott Mosier did a pretty good Scott job. Scott Mosier did a really good he did job. A really good See, job. I was thinking that, or I was thinking maybe we do Tim Burton it. We give it to him, and no, I don't want to support Tim Burton. Right I know now. you don't want to support Tim Burton right Here's now. Here's okay. my thing: because if we give it to Scott Mosier, that's one step closer to the Tyler Labine casting because he's already done some of the Smodcast movies. That's true. That's true. We okay. Gotta, okay. All right. Thinking all right. strategically here. Hear me out. Okay. We give this project to Leica. Okay. The people behind Coraline, Box Trolls. Oh, dude, you've got me yeah. hook, line, and sinker right yeah. now. Yeah. Just scrap everything that we said. Whatever yep. they do is going to be so much better. 100%. Missing Link was amazing. I have it's, not seen it yet, it's but I really amazing. need to watch it. Yeah. I just thought of another Santa. Side note, John Goodman. John Goodman. Was he Santa in the Claus? live action? Oh. I think in the live action remake of Year Without a Santa Claus. Do you are you familiar with this? There was a live action remake yeah, of Year it, Without a Santa okay, Claus. Okay, hold on. So right. I want to get all the details down, but it's got <laughs> Chris Kattan in it. Okay, Ethan Suplee. I think it's pronounced Suplee. Is it? <laughs> Is it Suplee? Have I, I been? Su- was, I mean, I thought it was Ethan Suplee. I say words wrong all the time, so I would trust okay. you over me. So but. 2006. Year Without a Santa Claus. It was a TV movie. All right. It was on, I want to say it was NBC. Yeah. It was on NBC. It was universally panned. <laughs> but it's got John Goodman as Santa Claus, Michael McKean as the Snow Miser, Harvey Firestein as the Heat Miser, um, Ethan Supley or Supley. Eddie as, Griffin as what Jingle a, ball, Bells, yeah, and what Eddie Griffin is Jingle Bells. Wait. Chris Kattan is Sparky. That's insane. This is a thing. So, have I convinced you? That's the big question. Have I convinced You've you that con- there's yeah, actually I, a chance to make a good I live action? I can get behind it as long as we stay far away from. I don't like. It's not the dislike for 2D animation. As I was sitting here, I was thinking yeah. even more. It's my dislike for 60s and 70s animation. 60s the and 70s very, animation like, is tough, The dude. very, like, schoolhouse Rockian drawn, like, the the magician, I think, is the best example. The way he's Big, drawn. exaggerated, like, body parts exactly. and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not into it. I don't think it's bad. Just, yeah, it's... I don't know. I, I don't know. There's some... There's always, like, a weird charm to me of, like... The 60s anime, specifically like now that I'm an adult, I think. 
yeah. <laughs> watching like Hanna Barbera cartoons. Yeah. And like you can see, like I understand that it's like, oh, they have a cell of the body and then that just stays there as they change like the bow tie, like from above the bow tie is a different animation cell yeah. for the mouth movements because it's cheaper and faster than animating the entire character in every single picture. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I love watching that stuff now where I'm like, man, this is so cheap. <laughs> this is so cheap. <laughs> but yes, I appreciate it. Um, You've convinced me. If, if, yeah. it's, if it's done 100% the way we just said. <laughs> yeah, exactly how we said it. Yep. I'll send this to some important people. We'll get okay. this out there because I think right. 2021. Frosty Returns. Tyler, Tyler the Beam, Frosty Snowman. And you know what's so stupid? I just realized we're sitting here and we're like kicking around like, who's age appropriate? It's going to be an animated film. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's... Like we're like, who's a twelve year old that we can get? That's this? true. If we're doing if we're if we're uh if we're doing stop motion or even regular animation, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But yeah, no, I think that that's uh we'll well we'll get this into the right hands. I want Trey Parker as Frosty. Ooh. I changed my mind. How about we just do South Park present Trey and Matt present Frosty, Frosty. the Snowman? Yeah, I don't even want like South Park. I just want I want more Trey and Matt stuff. They need to do more. <laughs> they need to they need to like I'll be sad when when South Park ends, but I'll be happy if it means that Trey and Matt like are allowed to just go do yeah do anything. Um, well, Merry Christmas, Dylan. Yeah, Merry Christmas, Matt. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh. oh, oh. listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.